Hey everybody, Rhett Thompson here. I'm a videographer, a filmmaker. I shoot mainly on the GH5, and today we are looking at some of the widest non-fish islands for the Micro Four Thirds system. Let's check it out. which are the famous Lawa 7.5 mm f2 and the slightly more obscure Rokinon 10 mm f2.8. I have the Cine version, so it says technically it's a T3.1, but technically neither of those numbers are right because I almost always use this lens with a 0.726 speed booster, which effectively makes it a 7.3 mm f2 lens, which is why I wanted to make this video. I really do not need both of these lenses and at the end of the video, I'll decide which one I'm going to get rid of and why. Let's look at build first. Like I said, I have the Rokinon Cine version for Canon EF mount with the speed booster adapted to Micro Four Thirds and honestly, this lens is huge, even for an APS-C lens. That does come with benefits though. It's got a bigger focus ring and aperture ring and this version has gears for bigger sets that need follow focuses and all that. The focus is precise and there's a smooth aperture control which I really prefer honestly. But one big downside is that front glass element. It protrudes so far and has that built-in hood that prevents any kind of filter. It has a cool lens cap that's made of plastic and in fact the whole thing is pretty much made of plastic with some rubber maybe. Although the whole thing is based on a metal Canon EF mount. The Lawa, other than that focal length and f-stop business, is really the total opposite. It's really, really tiny and made specifically for Micro Four Thirds. It has a pretty short focus throw, which isn't that big of a deal, but it could stand to be a little bit longer, honestly. And going with our theme of oppositeness, the focus ring actually also turns the opposite way from most of my lenses, including the Rokinon. It has a physical aperture ring as well, but this one is clicky and softly clicks into place with full stop increments, nothing in between. While I don't exactly love that, one thing I do love is the filter threads on this lens, allowing you to use thin filters. Thicker filters or filters using step-up rings are reported to cause additional darkening in the corners of your shots, and for me it makes it flare when the sun is in the shot, so mm, probably get one that fits this lens specifically. One more thing to note about the size is that it's really handy, but when you're focusing, it is very possible you get your finger in the shot more than any other lens you own. The lens you will want to pick up totally depends on what you value, usability or compactness, as well as if you already have a speed booster or want to bother with getting one. So on build quality, it's kind of hard to pick a real winner. So let's call it a side. In terms of image quality, all I'm gonna say is both lenses are good, not insanely sharp like a first party lens, but good. My speed booster wasn't great for APS-C, so I feel like the Rokinon had trouble focusing to infinity, but I can assure you both will be really good by f4 or 5.6 and even wide open they're not too bad for photography it might be a different story but for 4k video they're more than good enough in terms of distortion and vignetting neither lens is great but neither lens is bad enough i've ever noticed or worried about it before but if you pixel peep or do photography this might be a little more relevant to you but to summarize this quickly it seems the rokinon has about an average distortion, but handles vignetting pretty well, while the Lawa has stronger vignetting, but is relatively distortion free. While we're here, I should say the Rokinon looks very warm and a little green compared to the Lawa, that is producing a more cool and purple sort of image. It's interesting, but both could be pretty easily fixed in post if you don't like it for whatever reason. The field of view of these two lenses is very similar. But looking at these to my eye, the Lawa actually seems ever so slightly wider. But it's hard to tell since the tripod was moved, unfortunately. 
Next, we're gonna test the focus breathing and check out the bokeh a little bit as well. Both seem to display very little focus breathing when shifting from the foreground to the background. And the bokeh from both lenses is fine considering they're wide angle lenses, but the Rokinon does have less aperture blades, so stopping down might look a little bit more rough. Plus, when the backgrounds are only slightly out of focus, the Rokinon is a little bit more busy looking. But nobody really buys a wide angle for blurry backgrounds, especially on smaller micro four thirds cameras, but both are fast enough you can get some decent results with them. Yeah, I looked it up and reviewed some footage and it looks like the Laowa has seven blades and the Rokinon only has six. And I don't think those six are curved either. I think they're just straight blades. So the Laowa definitely wins in the, you know, stop down out of focus background section, which is kind of weird, but the advertised minimum focus of the Rokinon is at around nine and a half inches, which I thought was always very good for a lens like this. But the Laowa boasts a 4.72 inch minimum focus distance, which will rarely be used, but can produce some really cool, dramatic, fun images. In terms of the close-up image quality, they seem, eh, roughly the same. And moving on to flare, which I put in its own category, mainly because this is a very important factor, especially in a wide-angle lens. Real estate and landscape guys are gonna not like a lot of flare, but Guys like me love flare as a creative tool, and those guys are hopefully gonna get a lot out of this too. So we're looking at flare both as a technical problem and as a creative tool. Anyway, the Rokinon has some pretty complex flares. The flare itself consists of some big soft blue elements, and when the source of light gets close to the edge, you get a broad rainbow flare on the opposite end. Back in the middle, you see a giant blue rainbow ring around the very edges, which I think is pretty cool actually, really dig that. Stop down a little bit, the Rokinon isn't nearly as fun with those stop sign shaped flare elements being really distracting and the rainbow flare taken almost completely away. As well as one big yellow circle around the point of light. So wide open is kind of fun, stop down, I don't think anyone's going to love the flares on this thing. The Laowa presents us with a very complex flare pattern. The light source itself is a little better subdued than the Rokinon, and when lights are in the center of the frame, there's almost no visible flaring at all. But there is a bit of a loss of contrast. The closer to the edge of the frame, the more you get these crazy red and orange circles flying all over the place, as well as some of these rainbow sparks just coming from the light source itself. When the light is just outside of the frame, you get this big, broad spike of light. It's super weird, and I kind of love it, but I could definitely see those real estate guys hating this. Even in some creative situations, it could be a bit much. Stopped down, the Laowa loses almost all of these crazy rings of light and is generally more subdued in every way, except that broad flaring thing that happens when the light is just out of frame. That gets like focused down and gets much, much worse. Honestly, I have no idea what makes a good or bad sun star, but I think the Laowa wins here because it has more points. I, I don't know, I'll continue to include sun stars in videos and just let you guys tell me what you prefer. In fact, comment down below which sun star you prefer, the Rokinon or the Laowa. I had to review these lenses in a hurry, so I probably missed something that people would have wanted me to test, like coma for astrophotography, but it is what it is. Now it's time to reveal which lens did I decide to keep and why. It was the Laowa, and to explain why, I need to tell you the journey of these lenses. I originally got the Rokinon for a few reasons. First to be a gimbal lens, but also to be a match for my other Rokinon cine lenses, which I've shot a few short film projects on. Over time, I realized I wasn't 100% satisfied with my Rokinons and began selling them off one by one. And it is at this point that I realized the Laowa had very similar and almost identical specs and price as the 10 millimeter Rokinon. I also realized it was tiny and so it would balance on my small Weeble Lab gimbal much better. At the end of the day, the Rokinon was great for me, until it wasn't. Without my other Rokinon lenses, the 10mm had nothing to match, so I just figured a smaller lens was the way to go for most of my work. 
So the Rokinon goes and the Laowa stays, but remember, this was the right choice for me, but it might not be the right choice for you. I just wanted to share my thoughts on these two super goofy wide lenses. They're both great and I recommend both of them. Thanks for watching guys. Please like the video if you learned something or this helped you with your purchasing decisions. And while you're down there, leave a comment if you have any questions about the Lawa, the Rokinon or whatever. Uh, I'd also wanna hear if you've got some alternative wide angles that I should put the Lawa against or that you think might be better for other people in case there's, you know, the Lawa doesn't fit their needs. And lastly, if you wanna see more on the GH5 filmmaking, wide angle lenses uh, or anything like that, please consider subscribing so that you can see when my new videos go live. And thanks for watching.